here, we're taking a look at a video for technical mathematics. There are several videos in the technical mathematics area. This particular video is on addition and subtraction of radicals. At any time, stop or pause the video to examine the material more carefully. Let's get started. Okay. Let's remember that this is what a radical looks like. The n is the root order or index. I commonly refer to that as the root. Anything underneath the radical sign is referred to as the radicand. Now we run into the rules. We're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing radicals. Let's take a look at adding and subtracting first. We can only add or subtract if the radicands are identical. That means this portion has to be identical. And the indices, now remember I refer to that as the root. The roots are the same. Let's get started, see how this looks. All right, we've got our first equation, five, and remember that this is radical 6. Now when we don't have a root here, remember that that's usually the square root. So our indices or our root is the same. They're both square root. And our radicand is the same. So we can simply add those. 5 minus 3 is 2. And we keep our radicand. So just like simple addition and subtraction, as long as the root and the radicand is the same, we just simply add them. Okay, now here we have the same root, square, but we have to get this radicand in the same type. So we know that, let's write it out just to make sure that we're remembering everything we learned from the earlier videos. So the square root is 2 squared, right? That's 4 times 2 plus the square root of 2. So we can take this 2 to the outside. This is the same thing. I can put a 1 before it. Square root of 2. So my answer becomes 3 square root of 2. So what we did was, even though this radicand was not in the same uh, type as this radicand, we were able to change it so that it was. Stop the video and try this one on your own. The roots are the same and the radicands are the same, so it should be understandable on how to complete this. a radical that has a fraction underneath it. Our roots are the same. They're both square root, remember. But now we've got a fraction underneath the rad radical. And 
and if you remember from the earlier video, uh, we had to get rid of the radical. Let's rewrite this. Square root of 4 over the square root of 3. Well, I'm going to put a quote way over here. Square root of 25 over the square root of 3. Okay. Now, to get rid of the radicand down here, remember I have to rationalize the denominator. So in order to get this 3 to come out, I need one more 3. And of course, I have to multiply the numerator by that, too, so that I'm multiplying by 1. And let's do the same thing over here. It happens to be the same rationalizing square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now let's see what that gives us. All right, square root of 4 times 3. We can leave that 4 because we're at eventually going to bring that out. So we'll, we'll change that 4 to 2 squared. So it's easier for us to remember to bring it to the outside. Times 3. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 simply comes out as 3. Now to do the other part. Now the square root of 25, we know 25 is 5 squared. So again, we're going to be able to bring that out. Times 3 over 3. So let's bring those out that we can. We have 2 square root of 3 over 3 minus 5 square root of 3. So now, now we've got the same indice and we've got the same radicand, so we subtract them. 2 minus 5 is a minus 3, and we carry our radicand 3, and we have on the bottom 3. Oh, not quite done yet. We can simplify this, can't we? Yes, yeah, so we simplify that 3, and what we end up with is a negative square root of 3. Now look at that. We took that and we simplified it down to this. Isn't that great? Okay, let's try another one. Oh boy, here we have a lot to go through. can take out, we want the fourth root. Let's put a 10 here. And we know, we'll rewrite this, let's see, that's 2 to the fourth a squared and b. Oops, got to remember that root up here. So you see I'm trying to put that number in roots of 4. What does 81 break down to? Hopefully not 4. How about 3? 3 to the 4th is what? 3 is 9 times 3 is 10. 7 times 3 is 81. Yes. So we can put 3 to the 4th. Now remember, we broke this up. We said that's a to the 4th times a to the 2nd and b. So what can we take outside here? 2 and what
what can we take outside here? Three, A, and we have left A squared, B. Now look how nice that turned out for us. Fourth root of A squared B, fourth root of A squared B, therefore we can add these. Now remember that this is a monomial too, and this is also a monomial. You cannot add two to three. What you have to do is simply write it in the form of one. So it's two minus three A cannot combine that two and three. These are two different terms. All right, you try this one. Didn't turn out quite right. That should be a square. Oh my goodness, that should be a square. So now the idea is to take out whatever you can outside the radical and then add them. Stop the video and try it. All right, hope you got that right. Let's try this one. Looks a little more complicated. First thing we have to do is rationalize the radical. Now remember, let's write this out for you so you understand all these steps. We have to get rid of this 5x and we have to get rid of this 5y. We've got to be able to bring it to the outside, rationalizing the denominator here. So we multiply this by, and I, I skipped a little step, but usually I put the radical over here and the radical over here, but I think we can start simplifying some of these steps. So what do I need in order to bring that out? I need another 5x. That's what I'm going to rationalize, that one. Now this one's a little different. I need another 5y. All right, now let's see what we've got. Okay, that will become rationalize that denominator so it just becomes 5x minus y over, oh look how that turned out very nice, 5xy and we rationalize that denominator. Okay, before we simplify I'm sorry, before we subtract it, let's simplify this. You have an x in your numerator, x in the denominator. You have a y and a y. So, uh-oh, what happened here? We have radical 5xy over 5 minus radical 5xy over 5. We don't have to go any further. That's zero.
let's get into multiplying radicals. Now, there's going to be several slides there. This first one is going to be multiplying radicals with the same indices. Now, remember that indice is the same thing as root. I commonly refer to it as root. So that's this 5. So it's the same indice. Now, what do we do when we multiply them? As long as they are the same indice or root, we can put them together. And remember, we start off easy. So we have the fifth root of negative 77. And that's as far as we can go with that. Let's see what we can get into. Here's another one. Okay. This time, we're going to keep that third root. It's the same root. And we've got 7x squared. All of those are multiplied together. So we can rewrite this again, combining the x's. And we have 7 times 3, which is 21. So we're going to combine these, and we're going to combine these. x to the third. Oh, I forgot my root again. OK, now, what can we do with this? We can bring out the x, right? This can come to the outside. The final answer is x to the third root of 21. All right, so we did a little work there combining them. All right. Now, here's another type of multiplication, only in this case, we're raising it to a 4. And let's go back. What happens when we take a exponent and raise it to an exponent? We multiply those, right? So let's rewrite this. We keep our third root, but we have to now This is the same thing as 1, so 1 times 4 is 4, x, here we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we multiply them, so that becomes 8, and here comes y, and it's also raised to the 4. Now we start to take out what we can. So we can take out three twos, we can take out six eights, and we can take out three y. Now, instead of separating them like I used to, I'm going to hope that you're already aware of that. So we're going to take out two. put that two in, and I just want to separate those a little bit, because there's more to come outside, right? So I took out three twos. I have one two left over. I take out six twos, or six x's. That'll be x squared. So I have two x's left. We took out six left. And the y, I take out 3, and I have one y left. Okay? For those of you that forgot the simplification, let me write it out for you. So, so 2 to the third times 2 
can see now that this two comes out two of the x's come out and one is the y all right so that's reminiscing on we're back to those fractions. But in multiplication of fractions, that's a little bit different than what we were doing with addition and subtraction. We had to get rid of that radical. What we're going to do first um, is simplify inside the radical as much as possible. So let's rewrite this. Everything inside. simplify this to 2. And then what do we have here? see at the same time that I brought them down in the simplification, I broke them up into a radical above a radical. Because again, we have fractions. And what we have to do with fractions is rationalize the denominator. So I set that up for us. I'm starting to skip a couple of steps as we go along. So I need an extra radical three What do we get on the top here? Seven times two times three over three. Seven times two times three should equal 42. So we have radical 42. That is our simplification again, but it really came from um, the simplified radical. All right, let's talk about, we, we just got through with multiplying radicals with the same indices, but now we've got a problem. Now we've got two different indices, and we've got to find a way to multiply them together. All right, we know that we can rewrite this from previous videos into an exponent, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take 5x squared, and I'll put that in parentheses, raised to the 1 fourth. Remember how to convert ex uh, radicals to exponents? multiply an exponent times an exponent. We have to have, when we multiply an exponent times an exponent, we add them. In order to add these, we have to have the same denominator. So we have to rewrite this into the least common denominator. That least common denominator equals 12. So we'll keep our 5x squared. 
this time we're going to change this into 12. So we need to multiply the top by 3. So that changes this to 3 twelfths. And we'll keep our 2x. And this time we have to multiply by 4. 4 twelfths. Okay? Now we're going to put it back together. This becomes a radical. Of 5x squared to the third times we've got the same radical same root and this time we've got 2x to the fourth and we can put this all together now that we've got the same root Raising, taking an exponent raised to an exponent means we multiply them. That's x to the sixth, two to the fourth, and x to the fourth. Let's combine like terms still got this root 12 there. 5 to the third times 2 to the fourth. If you run that through, you should end up with 2,000. And we have x to the fourth and x to the sixth, which should give us x to the tenth. Now, we have nothing here that we could take out. We can't get any 12s or something to take out. So this becomes the final answer. Okay, so remember, the trick is to, when you have different roots, you have to take them back into exponential form, find the least common denominator, and then take them back to rational form so that you can multiply them. It's a little complicated, huh? Here's one for you to try. Now remember that this radical is squared and this radical is 3. So you're going to take this and you're going to raise it to the 1 half and this and raise it to the 1 third. Find the least common denominator and then revert back to radical. Stop the video and try this one come back and restart it. Okay, I hope you did well on that problem. Now what we're going to do is divide different indices. So you see this, here's one indice or root, and this one we commonly refer to as the square root. Now what are we going to do with this? to get rid of the denominator again. We have to rationalize this denominator. So if I have 2, I have to multiply it by one more 5x in order to get that to the outside, right?
have the two years of 15 at times 5 at. And that denominator becomes 5 at. We can combine that. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't combine that. Oh, look at that. I, I made a mistake. And uh, it's on the most important part. Let's try that again. Okay, we've got the true root of 15x, but look here. We multiply this by the square root. So we're back to multiplying on top different indices. So first of all, when we're dividing, we get rid of the radicals by rationalizing. Then we're back to the same problem of multiplying with different indices. So change it into exponents, 15 at a little extra time here. And that's raised to what? The one third. to the one half. And we just carry along this 5x. Least common denominator is 6, so we'll rewrite that as 15x to the 2 6 times 5x Okay, so now everything goes underneath the root of 6. Brings it back to a radical, and that lower number becomes the root. So we have 15 squared. forget that 5x. All right, now if we combine like terms, we're going to end up with, how many of you have uh, did that through your calculator already and came up with a big number, 28,000. Combine the x's to get x to the fifth. Okay, nothing we can take out there. All we have to do is put down there that 5x that we carried all the way through. So that becomes the answer. If we had 6x's, we could have brought it to the outside. But Neither one of these has a sixth root, so that becomes our answer. Different indices, you have to rationalize the denominator, and then you've got multiplying by different indices. And that's what we did earlier. Think you're ready? Try this one. Okay. Rationalize the denominator. Two more nines and two more x's in order to take this out. Then you'll have this raised to the third root, or this raised to the second root. Change the need to exponential, least common denominator, and back to rest. Stop the video. Try that on your own.